All right, and uh, welcome back to Morning Express. It is the newsroom that we are talking about and a quick reintroduction of the guests that we have here this morning. We have Dr. Ezekiel Mutua, who is the CEO for Kenya Films Classification Board. We have David Omoyo, CEO for Media Council of Kenya, and Reverend Mutinda Musimi, who is a, a media ethics lecturer. And we are talking about credibility of the media, the news that we cover, and also the fact that sometimes, because of the business models that we have, uh, are we forced to sometimes compromise the values, systems that we have as a country for the sake of that paycheck. But before we took the break, Dr. Ezekiel Mutua had raised some, uh, well, what is called serious issues, and this is to do with the credibility, quoting the uh, obituary that ran. And of course, there are many, many questions, there are more questions than answers that we have about that obituary. But uh, let me hear from you, uh, David Omoyo, your thoughts on the fact that there are certain things that, as much as it might be one in many, it deals a huge blow on uh, our credibility as the media. When something that, like that runs, then we have to do an apology later. My, without getting into discussing a specific media house on this show, my position is that the, the gates and the checks at that time were muted deliberately by someone at the top to let that advert pass. So what does the Media Council of Kenya have to do when something like that happens? Because that affects us all as a media. Uh, the line of ad the advertising beyond uh, we, we, must, we have a major a mishmash of confusion about the advertisers association the peace society and all that who should ideally regulate that but that deliberately forget about the apologies and all that and certain checks and systems were muted from the top we have demanded an answer we have been given the apology and it was an error and all that mm -hmm. i do not think that we should buy that because i have placed several obituaries at the nation media myself or in the newspapers myself mm -hmm. and i know the processes but now what, what what does that do to the kenyan the mwananchi when you see something like that and yet this is running on uh, what we'd call the mainstream media it it, it, it swiss the media is committing suicide itself you're simply selling your credibility by by bending to one force at one one time to please one or two people the public the kenyan people are quite intelligent they can see when they are being lied to and kenyans know that deliberately that was not an error that was a very calculated move and they know that the media house bought into the system and if we're going to talk back into that so that we have sometimes these issues at the very top at the executive level of media houses such that the guys here the editorial guys uh, below here are forced to do things they do not believe in you have a guy very well trained by uh, the reverend there at the university they have all the ethics and the guy who pays the the bill at the end of the month comes and demands that you guys don't cover this do this and that it's something we're going to discuss about that independence of the guys who make the technical decisions from the guys who make the executive decisions at the top mm -hmm. so you find that people below here or at the middle level are making things they do not believe in they go they know that they are clearly breaking their ethics and morals because the guys at the top who have a principal uh, business need have already been bought or they have discussed finances and right. checks and invoices and all that okay, so right. the media is committing self-suicide by allowing themselves to do that and always while well, guys look at the check that comes today after doing this they eventually lose in the long run we'll go into that about the history of uh, uh they any time when their ratings went up which position they were come to you uh, mutinda as a lecturer how far does a journalist go when it comes to that where you run something with that somehow compromising your very gender as skewed job honest to their calling and i would say one needs to be very honest to their calling because as a journalist they must not be compromised so is journalism a calling or a job but looking at the effort and the risks involved in money i mean sorry to make money then it cannot be it must be, be now for me the media houses the journalists because of course we're going to put all of them together there seems to be a kind of dash for survival and look at the content that he's talking about for, ex for example pornography and content that is for mature Adult people content. looking at betting frankly speaking i wouldn't i wouldn't want a media house to be involved in betting because again for me it seems like it is about money look at the ethics of that we are going to make one millionaire by making millions of people poor and a media house for me should not be engaging in that they can do the work for an, ad an advertiser but they themselves should not be involved in that so when something runs like that obituary and it could have come from anybody by the way if i wanted to walk into to these studios chances are i would still find my way here so we may blame the media house finally 
the buck stops with them. But somebody else could also have done that. And so in as much as we want to beat very hard on the media houses, yes, there are areas where they are to blame. But there is also an aspect of honesty in them doing a good and a credible job. All right, Dr. Mutua, you have vast experience as you have well articulated earlier on. You've also been at the helm of one of the main media houses and you understand fully that for a media house to run, it requires money and money is a big part of the whole business. And uh, maybe are there business models that we need to think about that uh, help us still stay afloat without compromising our value system. The reason I ask that is you'll find, for instance, uh, we have the biggest advertisers now as government. And that would definitely uh, compromise sometimes um, how we do our work based on the fact that you need that check to keep running. Are there business models that maybe we need to explore and think about that change uh, our paycheck or that person? They say he who pays the piper calls the, the tune. tune. Yeah. I think principally the media does not exist for money. It cannot exist without the money. It will need money to, to run. run its affairs. Uh, but money cannot be the major motive. The moment we make commercial interest the overriding factor in running of media, then we have lost it. It can become side shows, it becomes about advertising, every the opinion we credibility, we focus on a public the media will write the story is not true with not other media name. And when that happens, it matters. that's not the case for every media house. But I'm saying the few rotten apples in the industry, the quacks in the industry, the charlatans who masquerade as professionals and the only thing they have is just a pen and a notebook. They are not well trained, they are poorly paid. The correspondents across the country right now, most of them who have turned into PROs for county governments mm. and they are held at ransom by the news sources because they are given transport, their rents are paid by the news sources, they, their children's school fees is paid by the news sources and the media houses are announcing profits. For what? Train your journalists, pay them well, make them, <coughs> self, make them credible engines of change. I used to work with a man called Eman Omari in the 90s and Eman Omari one time, an MP, a Kanu MP tried to bribe Emmanuel Omari. And Emmanuel Omari removed his pay slip and told him, I can pay your salary. I work for National Media Group and I'm well paid. And that's when we published it. How Emmanuel Omari told that MP off then. The MPs did not have comes with criticism. Doing is hype and hoopla and to emotions that don't add value to right. national development. Reverend, I saw you nodding your head in the two hours. He reports about, say, a civil servant, and the civil servant walks into the office the next day. It's not because the story was not true. It is because of impunity. We can see it all the no, way. No, 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 Reverend, you can't say that. I'm, I, I, been, I, I, need to, I need to finish some cases. Yes, okay, and I agree. I have no problem with that. But how about if somebody is reporting about a case in court, an injunction, or somebody called to appear in court, that is true. The people do not show or they show up either way. Are we saying that we blame the journalist for that? It's a collapse of the system where people can choose to do whatever they choose in Kenya and therefore the one who is reporting looks like they were the one who are wrong. I think that's an aspect that we must also the check. Unity. Okay, I uh, come to you and again I still ask the same question. Business models. We are basically uh, looking at models which depend heavily on uh, either advertisers who possibly may compromise our values or government. Are there business models that we can venture into as the... Um, the newspapers and the number of all other... You find the source of things an ideal gives more than maybe 20 to 25 percent but because of failure of creativity we over rely on one model you can easily push that you can easily charge them a little higher you now over rely on them and because you get one person one office that pays for all that so when you have a bad story you receive a call not from the editorial you receive a call from the marketing director I remember we were supposed to do a one a 100 million project next week for the live show yes and uh, you still want to run that story that you have seen you trying to 
that's why we have seen a few uh, you know uh, teasers about a story that is going to run including this media house and, the, and the, then it doesn't run and then it just disappears and no explanation is forthcoming mm -hmm. then we get to sense that that call came from a certain commercial department and some money was mentioned so that the editor sitting here uh, receives a call from the finance director boss you can't run that because uh, then I cannot buy you the, the new studios you said last week because then this contract will disappear mm -hmm. that's one model number two is uh, that obsession with money until you lose morals. If you look up, it's very strong. That is the first time in about fifth, and the advertisement went, and it was. We realize that on the side of the public, they're in high, in authority to account, and you could take those the day to account. And the media house, their numbers went higher. It's a basic thing. The guys in media who um, are ideally very intelligent. Who try to take the easy route where you get one big check not the collection of checks and all that it's an it's it's a psychological laziness and, and you just don't want okay. to invest in more thinking and all, all that. right let me come to you reverend and uh, we're running out of time i want us to conclude shortly but uh looking at content and dr mutu has raised this severally um part of the content that sells quote unquote mm -hmm. is that content that possibly is uh content that goes against the values and i believe we already have truthfulness and of course Dignity and truthfulness. I think we're getting to a level where media houses are existing for the sake of making money. About the fact that they are still giving us news that information, but I think it's much more a cutthroat race about making money. And that and is also sad because if we look at, for instance, radio stations, some of the radio stations that have the highest numbers are those that give content that is out. It's coming from those that are not adults because there's something that is pulling and enticing rate more making less money but more money are targeting more advertising and that than just to the business looking model. at one. Yes, Thank uh media. Let me say that there is no substitute for moral values. We go to the basics and say and I and abhorn and the media begin and generally shape views the media can make and break the people they present today as role models and successful people they are socialites they are politicians who are insulting one another the the, the, the catch of hype celebrity culture that is based on nothing they, but, 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 but vanity mm. i think that's what is destroying the country and what we are coming in is to say these things cannot be the agenda the media is setting for our children when you air this, some of this content that shows like you can put 50 shillings and you become, you win millions, I think that, that essentially what, you, what the kids are seeing is that there are quick fixes to life. Mm -hmm. There is a get a, a rich quick scheme, so why work hard? Mm -hmm. If you're bringing in some socialites on TV and giving them all the airtime and deny, you deny a professor of the university airtime mm -hmm. and you give that, our kids are saying then, why work hard? Mm -hmm. When talk, examples that they they want to emulate. No wonder that study that we quoted as, much, as long as they have the money and as much by that the right agenda, the right that okay. there is a part for now as to say goodbye to KTN uh, home viewers as we look at the weather on news. We're going to have before we start segment.